What do you think is Israel's greatest challenge today? The yeah. same challenge we had since 1948. <laughs> yeah. The Arabs. <laughs> The Arabs around us is the greatest <laughs> challenge. Yeah. For the rest, Israel has succeeded. Yeah. This is one of the most sophisticated, most advanced, most developed yeah. countries in the world. We are leading in many fields. In, <clears throat> we are leading in uh, electronics, yeah. in technology, in high technology, in high tech. We are among the leading countries in many branches of medicine, of literature, of research, of agriculture, we are number one. Water management. <laughs> but not any chance of peace? With in the politics, Palestinians. we cannot be number one because, like I said, if we were <laughs> 1 million, 300 million yeah. Jews, and seven million Muslims, we would fantastic in politics. <laughs> but it's the other way around. Yeah. It's one billion, three hundred million <laughs> Muslims, and it's only seven million Israelis. So <laughs> we're on the losing end anyway, because they have not the influence. They can threaten the world, which they do, by the way. They can, let's put one, one simple thing from yesterday and today. When they attack, they fire rockets mm -hmm. on Israeli towns or settlements in Israel with the intention of killing people because these rockets are meant to kill people. And a whole town like Sterot doesn't live anymore for seven years already. Day by day, they're attacked by rockets. Kids are afraid to go to school. People leave the houses and run away. This is okay. When we want, when we try <coughs> to do something to ease the attacks on the road, like providing less electricity, mm -hmm. not uh, stopping electricity, less electricity, so make life a little bit harder for our neighbors. The whole world mm -hmm. yells, what is this? This is against international law. You're not, this is against humanity. Human. This is not your human. What is rockets on the road? That's not against international law. That's not inhuman. What is uh, uh, the so-called uh, kamikazes, the ones who go into a bus and explode into a bus? Terrorists, what is this? That's international law. This cannot be against what they do. It cannot be against occupation. We have left Gaza two years ago. There is not one Jew in Gaza. We have left Gaza. We have destroyed beautiful settlements. Beautiful settlements. We have destroyed everything and we withdrew. We forced the Jews to withdraw from there. The government forced them. Okay? So where do we occupy Gaza? We don't occupy Gaza. So why does Gaza fight occupation? What exactly occupation do they fight? No, they don't fight occupation. They want Israel to disappear. They want to destroy Israel. One of their great leaders, Ahmadinejad, he says this openly. Not once, not twice, he said, this country must disappear. Mm -hmm. He's a member of the United Nations, so is Israel. The United Nations, not one country has gotten up in the United Nations and has asked how is it possible that one member country can demand the destruction of another member country? We should kick them out of the United Nations, no? Nothing. You see, it's like I said, because we are only seven millions. If we were 50, 60 millions, if we had oil, maybe it would be much easier. <laughs> but we don't have oil, we're only seven millions. But we have a beautiful country. We have a country they cannot even dream of having. Go to the Arab countries, the rich Arab countries, not the poor Arab countries. The rich, go to Saudi Arabia, look around you and then come back and tell me if this is something to compare to Israel. 
Go to the rich countries. Go to, I've been in Qatar last year, a very rich country. Go and look at Qatar and please tell me, apart from the fantastic buildings they have, what exactly do they have? Or Abu Dhabi, or Dubai, these are the rich countries. Or Kuwait, nothing to compare to Israel. We have Nobel Prize winners. How many Arabs have been Nobel Prize winners? I tell you why, because they're not trying. <coughs> For hundreds of years they're not trying to be modern. They don't want to be modern because it's good for their rulers. They still are ruled by tribal leaders. They can be called kings or whatever. They're tribal leaders, they're sheikhs. Of course, it's nothing to compare. We are in the wrong spot here. We should really live between, let's say, Switzerland and Liechtenstein, or, something like that. <laughs> or Venezuela and, uh, and, and, and Colombia. <laughs> Would not be bad either. But we are in the wrong spot here. But this is the only spot we have right to be. This was, is, this was Israel five and a half thousand years ago, goddammit. There were no Arabs, there were no Palestinians, there were no Arab kings, but there were Jewish kings. Jerusalem is claimed, a fantastic story, Jerusalem is claimed by the Muslims <coughs> on that ground. David, King David, had decided Jerusalem as his capital. He wanted to build a temple, he didn't build a temple, his son Solomon built the temple. So established Jerusalem as the capital of the then Jewish people, then called the Hebrews and later the Judeans thousand years after we have been driven out and the temple was destroyed they built a mosque in Jerusalem and this is a holy place we have been there 5,000 years earlier we have made Jerusalem and this is their holy place and we are not allowed to do anything <coughs> it's not ours anymore what the hell is this but the world accepts this why like I said the oil and 1 billion 300 million people but the world will wake up one day. They're not dealing with us only, they're dealing with the Christians. They don't like the Christians either. But it will take some time until you all understand what this is all about. When you will understand, maybe there will be a change. For the moment, we're the ones who try to make understand the others. But it's not easy. We are a small country. We are a small country and not everybody in the world likes Jews. Let's Let's face this also. Not everyone likes Jews. Why? <laughs> Nobody you. will can explain that to me. I've never understood and I still don't understand. There's no difference between us. We are the same people. We look the same. We look the same. We act the same. We have good people and bad people. We have beautiful men and ugly. We have everything like the others. We have honest people and we have crooks. The others also have it. So what the hell is the difference? Because we have survived in the diaspora. We survived because we had one God and one faith. We believed in the same, in the same God. We had one book, the Torah. That's, that's the, whole, the whole explanation. Why did we survive and the others disappeared? The Assyrians, the Assyrians, the Greeks, they have all disappeared. They were much larger nations than we are. They disappeared because they didn't have the bonds we have. We had. Today we have Israel. We will survive because we do have Israel. I don't know about the Jews in the world, but about Israel I know. Nobody should be worried about Israel. We will lose people. It hurts us. Another hundred, another five hundred, but this country exists and will go on existing whatever the others will do. <laughs>